Good morning. Are we ready to bingo? <laughs> you didn't think you'd be playing bingo first thing in January, did you? When was the last time you played bingo? <laughs> if you're coming to join me this morning, we are going to play Menno Fit Bingo. And this is a way that we can discuss the symptoms of menopause and beyond. Because actually, a lot of these symptoms do carry on throughout the rest of a woman's life. And I'm kind of campaigning, because nobody kind of talks about this, that menopause, people think, is just this transitional period between like 40, or the same amount, 40 to 55. And then after that, everything's fine again. And it isn't. <laughs> so I'm kind of going out there to sort of look at and help you to look at if there's any symptoms still reoccurring occurring um erratic or is it any other symptoms so i'm really trying to talk to as many women over 50 or postmenopausal or women particularly so that we can decide whether this is the actual you know this is happening um but if you are feeling really fit and healthy and you are postmenopausal hooray we'll talk about that as well so there's few elements to this to this morning. Now, if you have been in the uh, membership site, you can download a copy of the bingo sheet, which has all of the symptoms listed. And I've got it here, hold on, <laughs> there, there on my screen right now. And then I've got my trusty Tupperware, where we're going to look up, I'm just going to sort of do a random uh, shout out for... <laughs> for the bingo call now there's no prizes sorry about that you know we're not getting a line or anything this is just a way for me to sort of discuss the symptoms with you and you can come back in the comments even if you're on the replay to let me know if that is one of your symptoms how you're feeling with it what you're doing to deal with it um, and then just discuss that and I think this is really quite relevant now I've been doing this for a few months now and when I go back to my sheet I find that I've got different symptoms. Now I'm 55, so I consider myself as postmenopausal now. Um, and I think feel I feel like things have settled down a lot, but there's still some lingering things that need to be sort of attended to. So I think also as a woman, we tend to just put up with things. Um, and whilst that's you know good resilience, yes, but also just you know there are things we can do to help ourselves and I'm going to discuss those as well today. Now in on my lap, on my uh, iPad here I've got my symptom checklist which I've been I will publish soon to you guys the member in the membership group. I'm working on it at the moment but this is all of what I'm talking about this morning all in one place so you might want that later but I'm just still working on that. So let's go for the first one and when you see it on the sheet you can decide whether it's it is what's happening to you and you can circle it or whatever. And this is quite good. Put a date on the top because we'll do this again in the next six months. So you can review your symptoms and see if they are any different. So the first one is irregular heart rate. Now, this is very apt because this is definitely one of mine I've uh, noticed. In fact, when I was 45, I went to a cardiologist because I was having palpitations. So erratically and it was something new for me so um this can obviously happen because of the the estrogen it's always about the estrogen and the progesterone and the relative um position of those within your body um and my estrogen really helps the blood vessels to stay flexible so if that is low you're going to get some kind of cardiovascular reaction or you might not it doesn't uh, you don't know now it is worth knowing if you have got symptoms of irregular heartbeat maybe you should go to the gp if it is new to you and you feel concerned but this can be and all of these symptoms you really need to check with the gp if you're really concerned but, but um a lot of these can be also menopausal symptoms so it's hard to say without knowing the person so it can be concerning uh, it involves having episodes of rapid pounding heartbeat that come on erratically. It's believed to be due to a deficiency of estrogen that overstimulates the circulatory and nervous system. This could be due to something more serious, so go and check. Now, I um, when I had a scan and everything, 
uh, of my heart and they came back with that it, and I did notice that it's more stimulated if I had more caffeine and if I drank alcohol so since then um the alcohol has kind of hardly ever drink really if I'm honest I do have a drink but very very rarely um and I have one coffee a day and one cup of tea and the rest of the time I'm drinking water now I've noticed mine are erratic again at the moment and I feel like it's been Christmas and um, there's lots going on. So I feel mine is very much related to stress, uh, as in too busy, taking too much on, <laughs> that kind of vibe. So I have to really consciously be aware of my rest times. And we'll, uh, throughout this morning, we will talk a lot about rest times because a lot of the symptoms can be really cured by a good, good active rest. Right, let's crack on because there's a lot to get through. Next one is itchy skin. Itchy skin. Now, that isn't one of the I've had, but put it down if you have. Let's have a read about what itchy skin is about. There's so many here. You have to <coughs> go through. Itchy skin. So, again, estrogen levels are decreased when the levels of collagen also go down. You need collagen in order to have fresh, resilient, well-toned skin. And when you have decreased the collagen levels, the skin will become drier, less useful in appearance, flakier and thinner. The dry skin is what leads to the itchiness, which can be extremely difficult to tolerate. It can. Um, this symptoms occurs early uh, in the menopause and leads to increased wrinkles. Oh, great. And women who have uh, premature over ovarian failure, so if the early menopause, will have more collagen loss than women who have menopause in the normal time. The best treatment is to try and balance the hormones. This is easy to say, isn't it? Um, I am actually taking a collagen supplement. You may already know that because we did a talk in this group uh, a few weeks ago about that. So um, if you want more details about that, let me know. But I do find that this is being very helpful for lots more uh, than just my skin. Digestive issues. So... Lots of women become sensitive in their tummy. Again, the is the collagen it also makes up your uh, the lining of your stomach, the lining of your um, well, all of your organs. But let's think about the digestive organs. So the uh, esophagus into the stomach, and you've got the or your um, uh, intestines. That's right. That's the word. So they all are made up of collagen. So like we just said, collagen is waning away just because of estrogen and this can be a, a, an effect on your digestive disorders um many uh, menopause programs that i've trained with talk about going gluten free um and that our, our gut are less tolerant towards gluten so that's sort of things like bread or anything that's made with flour so pastry goods biscuits cakes that kind of vibe so that could be a way, but you might need to test and try things. Everybody's body is different. Irritable bowel syndrome also is very uh, occurring in this time. And that can also lead to from um, high uh, cortisol levels, which is your stress hormone, which affects your tummy, affects your gut. It really does. Let's see what it says in my little menopause book. This uh, usually related to changes in the gastrointestinal function. And women may experience intestinal cramping, feeling sick, increased production of gas. It's believed to be caused by imbalance of the hormones that interrupt normal transition of food in the, in the GI tract. And it also becomes uh, stress related. Things like lactose or oh, milk intolerance. Yes. So dairy, things like that, or maybe resulting in those symptoms. And if there's an abdominal pain that lasts longer than three days and severe, you should obviously go to your doctor. So I know there's some people in my group that have IBS. A question, is your IBS worse or better moving through this transitional period? Let me know. That's a really good question, actually. Because sometimes it goes the other way, you know. You've had symptoms before and then they go away. <laughs> Loss of libido, really big one, big topic, this one, big one. So this is, again, we as women are made to have babies. Um, that sounds really sexist, but it just is how it is. So in the olden days, we would have died at 59. We'd have made the babies, stopped our periods around 51, and then died at 59 uh, because we have no more use. 
And that is basic the basic sort of ancient <laughs> um, ways of the woman. And we haven't evolved it as much as everybody thinks. So we are not made to do that anymore. <laughs> you know, your the desire will go because the hormones that were there to make that desire were are not there any longer. Now, I'm not saying again, everybody's different, but the majority of people that I do talk about this, and again, it's a topic that isn't talked about enough. So feel free. Um, you know, we're not made to do it now. <laughs> so don't be afraid, don't be I feel like women are very alarmed because of it. It can be alarming, obviously, it can be alarming. But to get your head around the fact that this is what happened in ancient times is quite, a, I feel like, a more comforting thought. Now, um, there's a lot of women now that um, they're on HRT. So you go on HRT and you have estrogen and your progesterone. Um, you might have a coil as your progesterone. You might have a patch or gel as the estrogen. And then when they've leveled, when that seems to have settled down, they then there is an option now to go to the GP and ask for testosterone. And testosterone is the hormone that helps you to have that libido back, gives you that va va voom, and it gives you that sort of desire back. It can also make you feel stronger and bigger and you know, kind of yeah. So if you are over concerned, go and have a chat with GP. If you're not on testosterone at the moment, there is a, a natural supplement called maca, which they believe does the similar thing. Um, we could buy that. Um, but you know, there's other related symptoms which we are going to go around down through in a minute, which relate to this. So I just to me, I think we're not talking about it enough, and that we don't fancy it, you don't fancy it, do you? <laughs> End of story. Headaches. Right, this is definitely one of mine. I need to circle that one. Headaches is definitely something that I have suffered from. In the past, it's waned away a lot. So this is one of the reasons why I actually went on HRT in the first place. I was getting migraines. They're not headaches. They're blooming awful. Migraines, which would be debilitating for two to three days uh, where I couldn't do a thing. You just have, just have to lie down and just keep your head still. It's just horrible. You can't sleep. It's not nice. So um, after about, I did try to do all of the natural things that they say for headaches, but they weren't working. So I went to the GP and explained, and they put me on HRT, which in form of a gel at that point, and I had the Myrena coil for the progestin, and it actually went, it went away straight away. So lack of estrogen can really cause um, constriction in the blood vessels, like I said, and this was obviously happening in my head headaches um so another way and then also i can't drink i couldn't drink alcohol because it would just trigger one and I, i'd even have to just have a, like a little sip of a wine just one wine and it would trigger it so that can really aid to headaches if you're just having normal headaches they don't have to be full-on migraines um and they can help because the estrogen levels are dropping if you have a particularly severe headache associated with other symptoms like fever and confusion obviously go to the doctor all of these things if you're over concerned please go to the gp we're not talking much about solutions at the moment i have talked a little bit but we'll talk about that another time right incontinence that's a big one incontinence so again, the estrogen makes our muscles strong. Yeah, testosterone makes the muscles strong. And we as women generally tend to eat less protein. So the collagen and the fibers of the muscle become weak. And that is the same for your bladder and all of the areas down there. Okay, uh, your bladder tube to your urethra becomes weaker and your hormone that tells you you don't need to go to the loo is not is or or does need to go to the loo is more active okay so all of those things can lead to that put on that top of that um pelvic floor weakness so pelvic floor muscle is like a hammock and its strong structure holds everything in it's like a little it's like a hammock okay so it holds all the muscles and organs and whatever and with weight gain with estrogen loss those muscles also weaken 
So you've got all of that going on and incontinence can be very debilitating. Again, that was one of mine. Now there's many, many things you can do. And in fact, I am just about to launch a pelvic floor health uh, menopause, uh, pelvic Pilates for pelvic floor menopause course online which will give you lots and lots of tips and tricks. And again, not, not all things work for everybody, but generally it takes time, like everything. It's a muscle, it needs to be trained like our other muscles and you can actually eradicate. A couple of things you can do immediately is to get away from the caffeine completely because that can stimulate the, the, the lining of the bladder and uh, give you a little bit irritable bladder syndrome. Um, or an alcohol also can weaken that and, and irritate the inside of the bladder. So those are a couple of things we can do straight away, but those muscle trainings are really good as well. Oh, that's actually one of mine as well. Restless legs. So in the night, you get in the night and you just cannot keep your legs still. It's quite common. It isn't one of mine, but one of the good fixes for that is magnesium. Taking a magnesium supplement can help that. This is all to do with blood vessels, really. Hair loss. Now, this is to do with testosterone. Um, so too little, too le uh, much testosterone can even drop your, you know, lose your hair. So um, in that way, get to do some strength training. Strength training and eating protein can stimulate the testosterone production in your body. Now, we're going to have less production anyway if you have too much and testosterone if you get a good amount of it can actually convert to estrogen so it can do like a two-way thing so strength training is the way forward for that eating a good healthy diet with plenty of protein is another one electric shocks like feeling of electric shock in the legs sometimes i've got this actually and i know one of my other ladies does she gets it throughout her body just before she was about to have a hot flush and she is postmenopausal, and this is still happening. Um, let me find what the book says about this. Um, what did I say it was? Electric shock. It's a sensation of a, like a rubber band, deep layers of your skin where it meets the muscles. It can mean that a hot flush is coming, um, more commonly seen in the head. Most of the time, it's a brief shock, but it feels weird. I've had it before myself. It's believed to relate to fluctuating estrogen levels and is both its effect on both nervous system and cardiovascular system. While this is harmless, you can treat it by hormonal balance, imbalance that causes this. Your doctor may have other treatments if it is a frequent thing. Right, next one, problems with memory. So don't be alarmed. Sometimes some women feel like they're going to be suffering from dementia because it is so alarming when you keep forgetting things. Again, it's to do with the blood vessels in your brain. It's to do with cortisol levels. So stress hormone is searing through much more than you ever think. And don't be alarmed because actually it comes back. So after menopause, that can settle right down and your, your brain remodels, if you like, and those cells become more active again. The key thing here is don't be alarmed and just keep relaxed you know, keep learning new things, keep moving your body very much. Um, exercise is so good for your brain. There's a new book coming out soon, Menopause Brain by an American doctor, I can't remember her name quite now, but I'm going to be reading it. So don't be worried. I will find out the info, but it's, she does, she's done all the studies on the women's brain and um, hormones. And this one is just about that. So it's really good. Now, joint pains. This is a big one that I deal with all the time because we have you know, Pilates, yoga, perfect for joint pains. And if they're really, you're in agony, you do need to be going again to see someone, maybe a physio to see if there's anything structurally wrong first. Um, but joint pains, again, it's the collagen around the knees. It's the synovial fluid, which is great. Like it's like the grease, greasing of the joints is drying out because of lack, lack of estrogen. So, we need to move. Mo movement is like mobility. Mobility movements is like um, hydrating the muscle. It's actually hydrating the joint. It's getting that synovial fluid created again. Um, dryness is a big thing at menopause. A lot of things are drying out. So another little tip, one of the supplements you could take here is 
vitamin D, very much uh, a good one for joints. And um, I take collagen supplement, which uh, we talked about before. That's really helping a lot with the joints. And also the other one is turmeric. It's really good. So breast pain. Now, breast pain is to do with, again, over too much estrogen. So sometimes, some days, you might have more estrogen than others and it's very erratic so if you're getting very tender breasts like when you were having periods was it before your period you, oh my god my boobs really hurt so that's the like the surge of estrogen before it drops away um so what you can do there is just again baths hot baths i always think was quite nice for that um and there's not really a lot you can do for it again all of the things is about movement and nutrition so good healthy protein based diet with lots of vegetables is my uh, thing if you get off the sugar you stop drinking alcohol alcohol very much can cause the joint pain by the way the sugar and the alcohol can really inflame it so if you think about because we're lacking in certain um, hormones now that our bodies are in a state of inflammation and inflammation can cause that that tenderness of the joints and and all that all that sort of like swelling almost so you can see some women if you see them they actually do look a bit swollen in the face and sort of yeah inflamed so inflammation so anti-inflammatory diet it's loads and loads of vegetables a good amount of protein and moving the body drinking lots of water brittle nails so again that's about collagen collagen you can get much stronger nails when you've taken collagen collagen supplements are really easy one to take as well it's got so much um protein it's protein basic collagen so it can really help um again healthy diet irregular periods this is sometimes um the one and only thing that people think oh yeah i'm going through the menopause because i've got irregular periods but actually i've got ladies that are in the postmenopausal years so you'd say that, well, obviously they're still menstruating, so that means they must be still ovulating. So they're not really. So say these are women like a 60-year-old. I have a 60-year-old I've seen in the past, and she was still ovulating and having periods regularly. They were irregular, but they were still happening. Now, if you're in the postmenopausal years, say you haven't had a period. So we only know we're in the postmenopausal years when you haven't had a period for a whole year, okay? So then you know that's it, you're done you're in the postmenopausal years. If you get bleeding after that, it's very important that you should go to the GP because this could be something else. So definitely important if you see spotting or bleeding after a whole year of going without your periods, just take a call, you know, ring the doctors. So depression. Now I'm going to clump this with depression, anxiety, and there's another one in there, isn't there? Um, yeah, that kind of thing. So sort of brain health. So, you know, the menopause is happening in your brain. Um, Dr. Lisa Moscone, that's the lady who's writing the book. She talks about this a lot. The, a lot of the symptoms are in the brain. And therefore, you could sometimes, I've had ladies that think they're actually going mad. I've actually felt that way. I'm much better now. But, you know, there's times when I'm thinking, oh, my God, is this, who, is, who am I? What's happening here? So maybe that's you. Um, don't be alarmed. It is normal or it, it's regular. You know, it's, it's quite common um, and it can happen. So really looking at yourself. I think a lot of women at our age that we kind of, we are sort of questioning things more anyway because of how the world is now um, and the woman's position in it. But I feel like, depression is is one that nobody's really talking about and we're just walking around like we have to put up with things so again if you don't feel right anxiety and depression are your things go to the gp have a good chat with them have a good chat with some friends like-minded women this is where our group comes in lovely when we do our well-being days we chat about all sorts of things and people get things off their chest all confidentially and we're like a little family now of a place where we feel safe to talk about stuff like this. Where anxiety is concerned, um, a couple of, when you're actually having like a feeling of anxiety in your body, uh, some people feel it in their tummy. So you get like butterfly feeling and that's kind of a grumbly tummy. Some people feel it upper into more of the chest. 
Some people feel it in the neck and the throat or the head. So one of the ways that you can kind of alleviate that immediately is doing three deep breaths. And we do this all the time in the Pilates. So really just consciously aware of your breath and just taking a moment and that can really ease the symptoms. Basically, it's a searing of cortisol coming through the body much higher than we did ever think. And then we often have, we eat and drink things that actually stimulate even more cortisol or we have a busy, busy life it stimulates even more cortisol. And you get that menopausal rage where you're like angry, like I've never been angry in my life. But you can find that a lot more women have got road rage or just snappy, you know. Um, so again, it's all to do with the cortisol uh, hormone. So problems concentrating, I put that in the same category as the brain health thing. Um, gum problems. Are your gums more bleedy? Bleedy? Is that a word? So um, disorder, they're common in women going through the menopause. Part of the problem may be lacked, lack of good oral hygiene, but also due to deficiency in estrogen, fully enough. So it's one of the most common symptoms and bleeding in the gums. Tooth loss is not uncommon as well. I have one of my ladies. She turned 50. Bless her. She spent most of the time in the de dentist teeth were just I mean the teeth were good but it, it just hit her um and her gums just did not want to have those teeth anymore so it could be something for you so obviously regular checks with the dentist and it's important to go to the dentist because uh, the gum health can be related to your heart health it's very related so um a dentist can say oh actually I think you need to go and see a doctor about your heart and uh, that's interesting isn't it so uh, let's go for more here weight gain now we talk about this one a lot obviously this is one of my top subjects if you need any help with weight gain um there's a many many uh, elements to this it's a whole topic we'll do a whole day we'll do uh, another little talk on that completely but yes there is a lot of women that that's why they get alarmed more about the weight gain which tells you a lot about our own body and images and how we're seen or we think people see us, um, and our, is our value wrapped around what our body looks like? Oh, there's a whole new topic talking now. We'll talk later. Bloating can be part of this, actually. So bloating can relate to that irritable bowel syndrome, that gut health problems. Um, it can be that you're due to being intolerant to eating foods that you used to eat, and now you can't eat them. So just check in with yourself. See what foods you feel like they bloat you. Um, I many women that find that bread doesn't agree with them, which suggests that it's the flour and the gluten. Um, and many women who suggest that the dairy products, so that would then suggest it's a lactose insensitivity rather than intolerance, or could be intolerance. Um, one of my ladies found that cucumbers didn't agree with her in this time and now she's postmenopausal she just doesn't eat cucumbers and she can eat lots of other things instead so just be aware of the foods that you're eating this can help you to feel like you've this can help to make you feel like you're gaining weight and you're not gaining weight you're just feeling bloated hot flushes this is a, a regular one that most people women feel like is the start of the change it's a real indicator that your cortisol levels are high and your estrogen is low so um, they can be horrible and debilitating. And many women do turn to HRT at that time and they'll feel better for it. I have ladies in the postmenopausal years who are still getting the night sweats particularly and just cannot shake them off at all. Now, I have one lady who has actually gone on HRT at the age of 75 and they have stopped it. It stops all of those symptoms. And the other symptoms that it stopped is vaginal dryness let me get that one up let's talk about that next so night sweats as we've just talked about lack of estrogen but also uh, for the postmenopausal woman we find vaginal um vaginal dryness I can't even say it now where's it gone there we go that is a really big symptom and many women you see, the older generation don't tend to talk about this stuff. So you're never going to know. But I know this from doing my pelvic health training. 
that most women in care homes have got the driest vaginas in the world <laughs> and they're all have incontinence issues because nobody's taught them how to train those muscles or anything and they were lacking in having HRT. So this older lady, this 75, who went back on HRT was one of the symptoms was her night sweats, but also a vaginal dryness was sorted out after taking after starting the patches and the tablet and she's absolutely feels amazing so this can be the vaginal dryness can also be the cause of why you don't want to have sex i mean why would you want to so that could be a, an area that you need to be looking at why is that there now there is a pessary that you can get which is estrogen and it's local estrogen so you don't take it in your mouth you you put this pessary into your vagina it's like a little cream twice a week and it can really help that local estrogen can help all the muscles around there. So it can help your pelvic floor, your incontinence. You can help your um, dry vagina because it can be so debilitating. There is a lady who has written a book all about this, My Dry Vagina or something, or My Menopausal Vagina. I can't remember the name of it, but a really fascinating book and there is certain like um, I can't remember the name of the uh, localized conditions that you can get um, leptosclerosis something like that that can be debilitating and horrible for the rest of your life and have to be aware of she, this lady can't wear jeans she can't could never ever ride a bike um, she could hardly walk if she's honest so she has a, a way that she deals with hers and everyone's different but that if you've got a, just a mild version of that, that vaginal estrogen is an absolute winner. And you can take have that after menopause. You don't have to just have HRT in those little years. You can have it later. If you feel the need, go and ask the GP and be persistent. This is your first port of call here where I'm just talking through these symptoms. But yeah, muscle tension. That's one, obviously, we deal with a lot in my Pilates and yoga classes, um, and it can be really helpful for that. So mobility and movement can help. Her. And also massage, self-massage. If we work with a hog, that really works a treat on the muscle tension. Um, and also looking at what your mind's saying. Are you holding tension in your mind? And if you are, that's you're often going to hold tension in the muscles. Mood swings, I'm going to put down because we've talked about that, really. Burning tongue. Now, I've never heard anyone of this burning tongue, which is interesting. Let's have a look at what burning tongue says. Um, burning mouth syndrome involves having a sensation of burning pain around the lips or tongue, and it can affect the whole mouth. There can be bad breath and bad taste inside your mouth. But there's no indication of irritation there. It can affect about 5% of women. And uh, obviously, men, women have it more than men. Most afflicted are those over 60, uh, but can be seen in younger individuals. Top cause is menopause and due to decreased levels of estrogen, funnily enough. If you experience ongoing pain, uh, go and see the doctor, obviously. So, yeah, I don't know how. I don't know any ways people can deal with that, but that's an unusual one, isn't it? Tingling sensations. I get these sometimes <clears throat> just down one side of my leg. It can be at night, it can be any time. <clears throat> it feels like your skin's crawling a little bit. Um, it's not unpleasant, but it is different. Um, I feel mobility is a winner. Often exercise can really tick the boxes for a lot of these things. Put that one in there. Irritability I'm going to put down because we've